Hey, welcome back to another, it's, it's been a long, long time, but uh, welcome back to another episode of YQMA. This is episode 41. If you're not familiar with YQMA, it stands for Your Questions, My Answers. And uh, we're doing something different than the, the norm. Uh, you know, these shows used to run like an hour and a half, two hours, and uh, there was lots and lots of talking, which was great, but uh, they were a nightmare to edit and produce and, and get everything organized. So uh, Brian and I were going to do these uh, split screen things and uh, and tackle probably three questions. Uh, try to keep this between 20 and 30 minutes, and uh, hopefully with the with the, uh, the easier editing procedure of these split screen things, which is super simple, uh, we'll be able to keep the time down and maybe get the frequency up on these videos and maybe get back to doing them every other week. But uh, we're just sort of going to rotate through them. Uh, maybe me and Brian this time, maybe Brian and Jerry next time, or, or Jerry and Mike, you know, however this, uh, this whole thing works out. So uh, we're just, you know, we're flying by the seat of our pants at this point. So, uh, Brian, would you, <laughs> would you tell everyone what we're smoking? <laughs> uh, we are both smoking an uh, Illusion 88, and I have no. I'm going to do what Jerry always does with the camera, but I have no idea if that's actually working. You have to take my word for it. It is an Illusion 88. Um, yeah, it's not working. Oh, there, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Walsh is working. <laughs> so. Uh, my, uh, I think I believe it was my number two favorite cigar of last year. Still one of my all-time favorite cigars. Anyway, um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was talking about the cigar. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Did we do? We've done a, vid uh, a review of these at some point, haven't we? No, I don't I think so. I oh, we haven't really. Mm, oh, not the eighty-eight. I don't think. Oh, that's that's weird. I could have sworn we did. Oh, that's a shame because we really should have. Uh, it's great smoke. I, I don't. I don't know the details on it. I, I. I honestly hadn't really thought too much uh, about going into it, but love these. <laughs> great flavor so far. <laughs> I just woke up. <laughs> Not that long ago, so I got nothing. I got. I got nothing right now at all. <laughs> all right. So let's uh, let's dive right on into uh, the first question. Uh, all three of these questions came from uh, the Stogie Review fan forums and. Uh, that's great. Uh, we also encourage you to send your questions in via email. You can also call them in uh, via voicemail, but I don't remember the number off the top of my head. And uh, if you if you send in a voicemail, voicemail question, we'll try to incorporate that into the, uh, the video so that we don't have to uh, fall all over our words and try to read what it is you're trying to convey to us. So first question from Jansky on the Stogie Review fan forums is, what are your thoughts on dry boxing cigars? So what do you think, Brian? Do you dry box your, your cigars at all? Uh, smoke them as you buy them? Any uh, special procedure you go through before smoking them? Yeah, typically, uh, because humidity is such a can be such a bitch when it comes to cigars. Um, if I if I buy it in a shop, I'll uh, you know I'll try to smoke it you know relatively quickly after buying it at the shop, just because the the humidity levels. At your standard brick and mortar, or you know, 70, 72 sometimes. They're a little, little wetter than I prefer. So if, but if I don't smoke it almost immediately, you know, I, I that in between time of a couple weeks, I'll throw it into one of my dryer humidors and just let it let it uh, sit for a while. And I, I have been w with some cigars that have issues, burning issues, or you know, whatever. I'll, I'll let I'll let them sit out, you know, for a couple of hours or even overnight. Sometimes doesn't bother me at all. I'm not, um, I'm not a slave to the seventy seventy humidity thing. I, I think I'm I much prefer something more, you know, closer closer in line with sixty five. But yeah, if if I a cigar, it, I know that just just a bitch to burn when it's at seventy percent. Uh, what's coming to mind right now because I've, I've smoked some recently is the uh, the Don Lino Africa. Um, that that's something I'll, yeah. I mean, dry boxing if I if I need to, but I'd prefer to just let it sit someplace with with uh, a low enough humidity that'll burn and just give it the the time it takes. I mean, I don't I don't know. I I I'm not convinced that dry boxing is going to is going to fix a the problem of a wet cigar unless you give it a lot of time to do it because or to dry out because it's not going to the the humidity is not going to escape evenly. So towards the foot of the cigar is going to it's still going to burn like it's really soggy, but the rest of it might, you know, towards the towards the foot, what might burn just fine. So, I, what do you think, Wal? 
Yeah, I, I got to think that if uh, if you're going to dry box cigars, you're you're it's most beneficial to do it over a span of you know a couple of days versus a couple of hours. Um, you know, I, I think once you put uh, a cigar into a dry box, you know, over over a period of a couple of hours, I think you're going to get some moisture wicking out. But I think it's going to be you know like surface moisture, not so much what's in the filler. And uh, by giving it an extended period of time, I, I think you'll you'll uh, you'll pull the moisture out of the filler and whatnot. But uh, but just sticking a cigar in a box for an hour, I think all you're going to be doing is drawing out the wrapper, and then you're going to have almost like a, it, it's it's going to be unbalanced, I think. And I don't know whether that will that would cause problems or what. Uh, anymore, I really don't worry about it. I buy 99.5 percent of my product from my local shop. Um, I don't subscribe to the to the belief that you have to let all your cigars rest prior to smoking them. Uh, a lot of times, I go to the cigar shop with nothing, buy a handful of cigars, and start lighting them up while I'm there. Not overly concerned with, you know, are they, you know, are they down to 65% where I like them, uh, because they smoke just fine at the at the local shop. Uh, the only time I ran into problems, and this was just very recently, was I ordered uh, a 10 pack sampler. It's actually it was a 10-pack of Robustos of the Oliva, Connecticut from Cigars International. They were running a, a special 10 cigars for 30 bucks. So I love the cigar, and I couldn't pass up $30 for, for 10 cigars. So I ordered them, I got them, and I tried doing the same thing. The day I got them, I lit one up, and it was just terrible. It seemed overly wet. And, uh, you know, that, that kind of makes sense. They're being stuck in a warehouse. The, the humidity is probably a bit higher. Then they get stuck into a Ziploc bag and into a shipping box, and, and it's got, you know, on average, what, three to five days before it arrives at its destination. And uh, the humidity's probably still up a little bit so that it doesn't run into any problems along the way. And in that case, those cigars just seemed too wet. They didn't smoke real good. The flavor just wasn't there that, 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 I, that I like uh, in regards to what I get at my local shop. So in the case that I order them online, I think they, they probably should spend a little bit of time resting in my humidor to bring the humidity down. But... Uh, you know, if I'm at my local shop, I don't even worry about it. Just pick up the cigar, clip it, light it, and, you know, I'm off. Yeah, I, I have to agree with that. Uh, my, my recent, uh, most recent experiments, uh, experience with a uh, something that was shipped to me, uh, I noticed it was one of the wettest cigars I've ever tried to smoke. I did this, the same thing where I got something out in the mail. It's like, hey, you know, what the hell, I'll just, I'll light one up right now. And the thing was, I mean, I if I would have spend any time like invent you know looking at it or you know feeling it or anything I would have noticed it it's like wow that's pretty soggy but yeah and that you know it it didn't burn it did not burn well I mean by the by the halfway point it just wouldn't didn't want to stay lit it was all kind of I don't know just wasn't right uh, and, and I, I agree you know typically out of a well-maintained humidor in a brick and mortar shop you just smoke it right away my, my issue is once I get it home if I'm not going to smoke it right away, there's a there's a certain period of time that I don't, I'll, I'll, you know, if I bring it home and I don't smoke it within a day or so, I'm going to sell, let it sit in the humidor probably for a week or two if, if I'm, you know, keep paying attention before I light it up just because there'll, there'll be a point where it's adjusting from the, the 70 or so percent of the, that, that hum, uh, humidor to like the 60, 65 percent of mine and there's going to be some burn irregularities. Uh, and some issues potentially that way. Not necessarily. It depends on cigar from one cigar to another. Some I've, some just won't ever have a problem no matter what you do. You can almost uh, you know abuse them, throw them at the wall, and they'll still smoke fine. It just really depends on the tobacco and who's rolling it and a million different little things. So I think yeah, I think I think we beat that to death. Did you have anything more you wanted to add to it? Well, uh, just in case anyone wasn't familiar with the term dry boxing, it's basically just as it sounds. You take uh, a box a box with uh, no humidification device, you put your cigar in it, and uh, it, it essentially just wicks the moisture out of your cigar and, uh, and, and does it slowly without, you know, it's not like sitting your cigar out on the counter, your kitchen counter, and just letting it go to dry out a little bit. This is more of a a more controlled environment, although there is no humidification device. So, so that's what dry boxing is. If you weren't familiar with uh, with the process. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess it's time for us to move on to the next one here. Let me uh, bring that question up. All right. From uh, from Rico on the uh, the fan forums. Uh, let's see. 
Let me read this one. As I sat here watching the latest YQMA, I wondered if and then how you keep the smell down when smoking indoors. Since I'm here in, uh, in, a, in this must have been a while ago, in a sunny, warm, cozy Minnesota smoking outside this winter. Oh, sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> will be limited and a little chilly if attempted. Okay, uh, I think what he's trying to say there, and I'm not sure I read that right, or maybe it wasn't typed right, is it's freaking hella cold outside, and he doesn't want to do it, so he wants to smoke inside. Because <laughs> he don't want to freeze his nuts off. Got it. Okay, so smoking inside is probably not going to happen unless I really want a divorce or can find a great way to minimize or remove the smell. Um... I'll throw this over to Walt. What are your thoughts, man? Um, you know, I I only smoke in one room of the house, and that is the room that I'm in uh, until my office gets finished, and then uh, I'll be smoking in that room, uh, in which case I've got an exhaust fan going in, and I've got tons and tons of insulation to try to maintain uh, a relatively sealed environment where the smoke's not going to escape into the rest of the house. Uh, in the room that I'm in right now, I just close the door and uh, pop open a window, if it's not, you know, if it's warm, I'll pop open a window. If it's relatively cold, I have a filter filter stuck on the back of a box fan, and basically, it, it it's sort of like a homemade air scrubber. It works fairly well, and I'm not, and I really haven't noticed much cigar smell in the rest of the house. My wife doesn't smoke cigars; she hasn't complained about any smell in the house. So, um, I, I don't think it is as bad as some people. Uh, perceive it. Um, you know, as long as you're doing something like keeping a window open, keeping yourself limited to one room in, in the house, I don't think that uh, you're going to stink up the opposite end of the house. Unless, of course, you seal up the room and the smoke is just billowing under the door. Uh, but uh, you, there are products like Pure Air that, that work very well. You can get those uh, air cleaners at, like anywhere, Walmart, Target, things like that. You just have to take them apart and clean them really well afterwards. There's, you know, those those ozone things that, that, you know, create ozone in the room to try to remove the odor. You know, there, there are lots of things you can go out and buy to help with the, help with the smell, but I've never really had much trouble with it. I mean, how much trouble have you seen with, with smoking indoors? Do you, do you only smoke in, in your office or anywhere in the house is that free game? Um... In in rare rare occasions, if I'm having you know if the wife is having a party and we invite over a bunch of guys that are going to smoke cigars, which is really rare that it happens, but she'll she'll let us smoke out in the living room area. And I used to uh, sit next to a particular window uh, with a fan, and you know while I was watching some TV. But the, the wife has kind of slowly put the kibosh on that. So I'm mostly here in the glorious monastery, smoking my cigars. Um, a couple of pointers in, with, with regard to smell. Um, first of all, you, you got to get rid of the cigar butts almost immediately um, it, once they've gone out. That's that's where that's where the ninety five percent of the uh, the smell is. You leave that thing overnight anywhere in the house, it's going to be it'll, you, you'll be smelling it for a week. So you get rid of those as soon as you can. Um, I, I found that uh, you know throwing them in water actually prevents. Uh, the smell from escaping for the most part uh, almost it really cuts down just it, just sitting there and going out and uh, with with nothing uh, that's just yeah, that's that's heinous it's just that's the worst the worst part of uh, the worst smell you can get out of a cigar um, I think that uh, picking a place to smoke uh, that doesn't have a lot of carpeting or a lot of like stuff that's going to collect the smoke is going to help you out if unfortunately the monastery does not have hardwood floors I wish it did. Uh, so there is a little bit of a lingering kind of a, uh, a, a, a nicely refined cigar smell to this room, um, and it, yeah, the, the the shades they they probably smell horrible too. I haven't even I haven't even noticed, but um, but yeah, selecting where you smoke, looking for uh, in, an environment where there are fewer things to actually soak up the the aroma will help. Um, let's see, let me, let me think. I know that uh, a lot of air conditioning units that they'll have a setting where you, you know you you put a of course you put a filter in it make sure you change your filters all the time. You can you can have the air conditioning unit run uh, in such a way that even if it isn't cooling, it's it's blowing the fan, circulating the air through that filter. That helps too. But it, at the same time, that can 
depending on, I, I guess, depending on how your house is set up, it can it circulate some of the uh, cigar aroma throughout the house. But honestly, the I only really notice any kind of cigar smell if I notice it at all. Mostly in this room, my wife counteracts that by by uh, burning, you know, scented candles in other part of the house to make sure that that doesn't come through. So, uh, let's see. I had some other ideas and I just can't think of them. Um, and the the air filters, I haven't. I mean, I've got one that that I run occasionally. I usually sit next to a fan, uh, a fan and a window. And the only reason I, I don't have it running right now because it's usually pretty loud. Eh, it's actually I'm making a lot of noise right now, so um, that helps. Yeah, I, th I think I'm out of ideas. I, I just I think the air fil uh, filters filtration systems that I've had. Uh, Maybe I just they need to be clean, but I don't know how much they really help. Honestly, um, just keeping the air circulating with the wind with the window open, I think helps more than anything else. And again, just keep an eye, look around your you know your environment. If you've got a, a lot of fur and stuff hanging around everywhere, and carpets and crap, you know, it's going to suck some of it up. I mean, there's not a lot you can do about that. But if you make sure you get rid of your cigar butts as soon as possible, just get them the hell out of the house. And it'll it'll help a lot. So, yeah, I think if you're fortunate right. enough to have uh, windows on opposite ends of the room, you know, open up both windows, put a fan in one blowing out, and to, to create some sort of breeze across the room to, to, you know, to suck your cigar smoke out, I think that'll do, do a really good job of removing a lot of the odor. And, uh, you know, just uh, common sense, too. If, if you have forced hot air, don't smoke your cigar with, uh, with the air return register, like, directly above you, because it's just going to suck it into the system and distribute it elsewhere in the house, even if it does go through a filter. You're probably going to smell it elsewhere, but uh, you know I think that's the the, the best that we can do on uh, on this particular situation. <laughs> so I don't know where we are on time, but I think we've got uh, I think we have time for one more question. I think I think it says we're right around the thirty minute point at this point. I, though I, I don't know how much of this that includes recording and how much of that's a, us bullshitting beforehand. So I don't know. Yeah, then I think we, we probably had you know ten minutes before I turned the recorder on. So we, well, uh, you know what? Let's let's hold off on that question until the next one. And uh, I don't know. Let's talk about the, the cigar a little bit. You know, I, th we, I think we've got we've got comfortably five minutes to dispose of. What do you think? Sure, sure. So what are you thinking? Are you did you uh, wind up grabbing the your uh, what you say Wood, Wood Woodward's Woodford's Reserve or whatever? Yeah, actually, I did. It's. It's actually afternoon now, so uh, so we're going. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I got up uh, relatively early this morning. I had all but a pot of coffee, and it was just I was all coffeeed out. We were originally going to smoke uh, the uh, the uh, La Traviata, but we decided to go with the uh, the Illusione eighty eight. Uh, you know, last minute, and one of my translation, I forgot to buy <laughs> one. <laughs> one of my favorite pairings is actually uh, the Illusione eighty eight and Woodford Reserve Bourbon. So. I decided to grab myself a little bit, and uh, yeah, that works really well. Hold up, clear glass bottle to the camera. That well, I, I can actually read it, so I think it worked out okay. But uh, but but yeah, it's it's good stuff. I think it's like thirty five bucks a bottle. Uh, really smooth, and uh, it's going really well, even even fairly early on a Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon at this point. Um, you know, my only. I really shouldn't even say it's a, it's a complaint, but the uh, the Illusio and 88 have it a, a bit more pep than I expected it to this early on in the day. I usually smoke these later on in the afternoon and in the evening. Uh, a lot of times I, I'll smoke these as, you know, the end of the day cigar just because they're very flavorful and um, just very enjoyable. I want them to be sort of the last cigar I smoke of the day because I like them that much. The only complaint I have is that I think this is the last one I have with me right now, and it's delicious, and I, I could probably easily smoke yet another one of these following this, and without a problem. And I'm only maybe a third into it, really. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's it. It's, the thing is, I love these. These are delicious. Uh, I, I need to just buy a box of them again. I mean, I had a box, I smoked the entire box slowly, you know, savored them, and uh, they're great, man. They're just, they're fantastic. They're just, it's in, it, an incredible amount of flavor, and, and I, I kind of got to disagree with Walt. It, it, I, in my ideal 
situation, I'd smoke either this or Jade Fuego Grand Reserva Corojo number one every morning my entire life and just be in bliss. Of course, I unfortunately I, I you know I I'm experimenting with a lot of other things, so I, I a lot of times will save that morning smoke for something new and different that I want to get a good read on, you know, get a get a feel for. So unfortunately, I don't get to smoke my favorite smokes first thing in the morning every day like I'd like to, but, you know, it's a tough life. We get expensive, too, you know. Yeah. What are these, uh, eight, nine bucks, eight or nine bucks? I think it, I don't know, eight or nine bucks for uh, for this cigar. So, so I definitely, although I would love to smoke one every day, I think it's uh, it's a little outside of my budget. Yeah, I'll take out a second mortgage. <laughs> Uh, I'm not having in, in terms of the in terms of the cigar, yeah. You know, the ash is it, it's the kind of ash that I've seen on almost everything that's that's done by uh, the the Casa Fernandez people that, from their tobacco. Uh, What's it called? Ag, Ag, Agnor, Agnorosa tobacco. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's kind of a little little dark, little you know, kind of mottled light gray. Um, yeah, sometimes a little uh, structurally unsound, but I mean. Really, it's it's you know who cares? It's got that it's got that great like uh, man, it's, it's a flavor that's hard to describe. It's uh, kind of and I don't know. It's a little bit of coffee, little sweet, kind of almost a little uh, fruity sweetness to it. There's just a lot of stuff going on on in there. Of course, I am drinking some coffee right now, so uh, that's going to influence the the flavor of it. It's just I don't know. If you were going to describe this, what what would you say? Good. <laughs> yeah, <they're good. laughs> I mean, they're they have uh, this this Aganorsa tobacco has a, a, a very unique taste. A lot of the Illusion products have uh, a similar fo flavor profile. I just think that these cigars are very very rich, and uh, they really have that that uh, that Corojo flavor that I really enjoy. And uh, you know, just sort of top off the top of my head, what I'm getting is just a very rich Corojo. Uh, sort of earthy base with uh, with uh, some sweet flavors in it, and uh, I really can't say enough about them. I really like these, and I, up until recently, I haven't smoked very many of these. Uh, my shop just opened an account with uh, Illusion, and uh, and now I can get them finally locally. Whereas before, it was kind of like whenever I got out to you know Central Pennsylvania, I was able to get them at, at Gettysburg. But uh, but now that I have them locally, I, I tend to smoke uh, them regularly. Uh, maybe two a week something like that yeah that's we're, we're kind of spoiled over here at Atlanta uh, we got a, a number of places to buy them from unfortunately and I, I have no idea why it is maybe it's a supply issue or whatever but uh, you know you, I, most shops I go into they'll have like three boxes of them they'll all be half empty and it'll be not it'll never be the same three each time so I love the 88 it's uh, I smoked the, uh, the 68 recently and it's I mean that's that's nice. Uh, yeah, that's a good st stick too, but it doesn't hold a candle to the '88. And so you know, you go in one time, and sometimes you'll yeah, yeah that'll be there. I was like, yeah, hallelujah, grab some. Other times it'll be you know some of the other vitolas. You know, it, none of them are bad, but it's it's that's that's the problem is is finding a shop that consistently has, you know, what you're looking for <laughs> with these. And I I have to think it's just a supply problem. Like they blow through them and like. What can I send me? What what you got? Type of thing, and like, all right, well, I got these. So, yeah, it's oh well, you know, I'll survive. I'll set to buy a box one these days. Well, I think that uh, that about covers YQMA episode forty one. Um, with any luck, we'll get another one out. Uh, you know, maybe two weeks or so, uh, maybe sooner, maybe later. It's all we're we're just playing this by ear again, like I said earlier. So. Um, Till next time, happy smoking and all that good stuff. Yeah.